Cool.fm is the perfect station for music lovers who enjoy a mix of adult pop, modern country, and classic hits. Our unique blend of different genres creates an awesome listening experience that you won't find anywhere else. With Cool.fm, you don't have to constantly change stations to hear the music you love. Just download the Live 365 app and start listening to our curated selection of modern adult and country hits as well as the classics you know and love. So tune in to Cool.fm and start enjoying the best of all your favorite music in one place. Hi, I'm Dan Mambiela, writer and artist of Under God. You can find my book at bandofbards.com slash bard hyphen shop. And you can find me on Twitter at Dan Mambiela. And you're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by a returning guest. He was on the show almost one year to the state, exactly. The creator of an amazing series called, of course, Under God, and now being published by Band of Bards. We're joined by the ever talented Dan Mambila. How are you doing today? Doing great, Kurt. Thank you very, very much for having me. I appreciate you you making this space and making space for me on it. So wow. thank you very, very much for, for seeing a need and, and filling it. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. I am Dan Mambiella, the writer-artist of Under God, which was originally crowdfunded under Zoop campaign, but it has now been picked up by Band of Bards. And I'm very excited that Band of Bards is has expanded the comic to the full 60 pages so that it's the original crowdfunded story and then additional pages of concept art and explaining concepts within the book and background behind the scenes material. So I'm very excited for people to see that. And it's in previews right now, and it comes out in June, but you can only get it in June if you tell your comic shop right now to order it and put it on your pull list. Run, don't walk to your comic shop and ask them to please put Under God on your pull list from Band of Bards. Is there a code or something that they need to, to ask about? There, there is, but I think if you just let them know that the book is from Band of Bards and it's called Under God, it even has a little spotlight in the previews, uh, so you can go there. And also, you know, you can order it directly from Band of Bards at bandofbards.com slash bard hyphen shop. But you want to get it on New Comic Book Day. You want to go to the shop and pick it up. So let, let your comic shop, the, the fine people at your comic shop know, ask for it by name, Under God from Band of Bards. You're supporting local businesses as well too it's it's an an all-encompassing right. aspect of you know supporting local it's a multi-win you you just can't stop the w's <laughs> with that, with that, that scenario <laughs> you know we talked obviously last year about the, the comic it's great that it got funded it's it's a shame that it didn't get to the the whole stretch goal aspect it's an initial loss becomes a win because of band of bards so how did your conversation with band of bards go with you be either pitching your comic to them or did they approach you how did that conversation Happen. So I pitched to Band of Bards and several other publishers, and I was very happy that Band of Bards was interested in Under God. And working with Band of Bards has been great. Like I mentioned uh, last time, I did write some comics in the 90s. It was creator-owned comics, but like I was working for the guy who was the creator who owned the comic. So <laughs> like they weren't my creator-owned comics. And that was very, you know, everything had to be the house style and the house direction. And if you tried to elevate something and it wasn't the way they thought things had to go. You, you had to step in line, you know, if you were going to write that, write that script for them. So with Band of Bards, it really has been, for example, at the very beginning, I said at the, at the opening of the story, I have pages in a certain order so that the story has chapter headings and it will break a certain way. And when it opens and I said, can we please, you know, I didn't know what it was going to be like working with them. This is the first time working on a creator owned book with a publisher like that. And, and I said, oh, can we please keep that order? And their response was like, that's your book. Like that, it has to be that order. Like you, you tell us the order that those pages need to be in. So that, that was a, a great experience. Like they're very nice. They, they sent, which I was also, I'm also not familiar with working with other publishers in the past was they sent a really lovely proof of under God before the, then I could go through and say like, okay, yeah, everything is exactly like we talked about. There wasn't ever a moment of like, I hope, I can't wait to see what it looks like. I can't wait to see what the publisher edition comes out like. It's going to be exactly what, what we want. So it's, yeah. it's going to be very nice. Yeah, Chris and Tim have done some great work with other creators in, in their stable as well, too. I've had him on the show a couple of times in the past as well. And yeah. just seeing nice guys. guys. Oh, yeah. 
great guys. And just the seeing, seeing the fact that they're looking after their creators, not just trying to set an etiquette or here's a line in the sand. It's great to see that they're looking for helping out all types of creative people in every type of community. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really been a very nice experience. I'm very, very grateful and happy that, you know, messaging with them, I, I say like our book under God, like, you know, I'm, v- I'm very happy that it's it's the book that I created, but it's a band of bar books. So it's it's our book that we're putting out. So give us a quick synopsis <laughs> of some of the characters and and why this world is so critical for today's society act. Yeah. So, so the main character is Samantha Skyland, who is one of a few high achieving graduates who have been selected to take part in this very, very prestigious ceremony on almsgiving day, where they get to go on the other side of the big, beautiful wall that separates Holy America from the cutoff states that used to be part of, of America, you know, are not part of the Christian theocracy that the walled in states take part of. So it's these high achieving graduates, they get to partake in this ceremony. Sadly, when they get to the other side of the wall, things quickly go wrong for them. And Samantha finds herself stuck on the unbeliever side. And now she's being held hostage by the people that she has been taught mean her harm her whole life. Uh, A big part of Under God has to do with the weaponization of religion. Another big thing about Under God has to do with what happens when your beliefs and your values are in conflict. And Samantha's beliefs and values come to a sharp, sharp pointed conflict at one point, And she is, as only the fictional world can do, is forced to choose one. And she has to make a make a decision. The other thing that uh, is present in Under God and also present in a lot of my work is the concept of uh, incremental good, that no amount of good done against even a vast mountain of evil is inconsequential. It's you're still doing the right thing. It still makes a difference. It's still the, the, the correct action to take. We get to see what the ramifications of making the, that difficult choice. Cause you know, in the real world, people have their beliefs and their values in conflict all the time. And they go on to live <laughs> perfectly high praised lives and they're just walking conflicts, but they get to do just fine. But in, in the fictional world, we get to hold someone's feet to the fire and say like, nope, you can't have it both ways. You pick one, which is the one you're going to go with. So we, well, get to, we get to see that. It also seems mm-hmm. like uh, since we last talked, things uh, in the real world have uh, <laughs> gone slightly more towards your your story uh, of the fictional realm in, in a fairly, fairly drastic measure in that case. At, at a breakneck speed, right? Really like whatever Dan Mambiela fan is out there watching all of these interviews back to back, I'm sorry for the repetition, but like I've said before, and I've tweeted, can the real world keep it together long enough so that my fictional story can remain like, oh, it's that's an interesting analysis instead of like, oh, well, th- this is behind us now. Like we're we're way more fascist and walled off than, than any of this. Like, so yeah, and, and you're right. There are real legislators, not crazy people on social media, real people with power in U.S. government saying things like we should split up country by and we should have a christian nationalism and we should read it while it's still thought experiment and not <laughs> and not, not social studies yeah <laughs> you're broaching in on simpsons territory right now on um, yeah <laughs> Yeah, sadly, like predicting <laughs> the predictive nature. Yeah, Simpsons has that cornered though, because I think also in part because they just produce so much that, you know, they literally are that monkey typing in a closet. They, they've said everything, you know, you name it, they've posited yeah. it. Like <laughs> That's the difference between creativity and, and reality as well, too. And, and you do uh, separate both fairly well to that matter. And you have very intriguing characters in, in this world. And you now the pitfalls of, of religion and society is definitely a very fine line when it comes to beliefs and not belief. The fact that you're at least trying to get a story out there, even if it's a, a one shot, or even if you plan to do more with this particular series or characters, maybe a different viewpoint. You know, I think it's just rather interesting to to showcase this style of, of comedy. Yeah, and to dovetail back into, you said, if there's a sequel, but also Under God is not critical of the concept of religion. Under God is extremely critical of those who would weaponize religion and use religion as a as a tool to harm people. That's really where, that's your bag. You're going to feel a little roasted by Under God. If you have any kind of faith or not, I don't think you will feel any kind of state from Under God. You asked if there's a 
more under God, uh, <laughs> I leave it in the hands of the people. If the people want more under God, I'm right here. I'm not running anywhere. Like I'm not, I'm not going away. I just need, just, just people need to say, yes, we want more under God. And I would be more than happy to, <laughs> to make more. The story, everything you need to know in the story is just in that one shot, but the world does not come to an end at the end of that story. That, that world keeps keep spinning. So well, there's many other things to say there. It's a great story overall. It's something that, you know, you have a publisher now, you have a lot less on your plate in that regard, but you're still taking the time to promote it. And of course, showcase it. I've seen you on other shows as well too. So it's great to see you finally getting out there to share everything. So it's wonderful to see. <laughs> I said recently that I'm trying to reach full market Dan duration on the promotion of, of Under God. So I'm trying to get it in front of as many eyes as possible with my little Twitter account. It's tough doing these types of interviews as well, too, because you don't want to be repetitive, but you know, you still have to hit your key points. It is hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard not to. It's not a different book every interview. Like that, that would be that would be the dream because then you'd have new things to say every every spot. You know, looking then at maybe the future, not not necessarily of under God, but of, of yourself as a creative person. What other stories are kind of percolating in your mind, or do you have kind of planned but maybe aren't ready to be published. I'm 20 pages into a 30 page story called Vengeance Must Die, which is a last Count of Monte Cristo story it is an analysis of the vengeance archetype character, Punisher and, and a million other characters like that. And it's essentially taking a look at what's at the end of a life of collecting the wages of vengeance. Like what's in store for you? What will be your reward at the end of that? So I hope to have somewhere later this year, it's going to be my first color story. It's not going to be black and white, like, like under God, it's going to be full color. So that's also going to take a little bit of time because I want to have fun and do it might have a shot at doing it myself hopefully before the year's up that will be somewhere with someone and hopefully people will be enjoying it so you're doing everything yourself you're doing the writing and the art as well too so oh. just like under god but it'll be color so i'm adding one more one more level of difficulty to the uh, situation you, you got to try all of this stuff at least once or at least brush off the dust of a skill you haven't used to yeah now. yeah exactly right you have to you can only go so so long with the same amount of weight you have to at some point you have to add an extra plate on there to, <laughs> to see if you can <laughs> you can still do it if it doesn't sink your creative boat then you're fine just yeah. add another plate <laughs> onto it you're good. exactly exactly how does it help you though once you finish the story did you find any eureka moments or recollections or did it ease your mind in any way? I think it, there was some um, catharsis in saying it again. There's not so many situations in life where you can like push someone up against the wall and tell them like, this is what's wrong with all the things that, be, you know, you, so like in art, you can, that, that's where you can kind of corner someone and just say all your things. So well, sadly, the problems are still there. If anything, I think maybe I might be a little more acute, uh, fine tuned to hearing them, but there's several moments in Under God that say things that I think about a lot and having the ability to say it, you know, it, is was is very therapeutic you got to heal some way shape or form at least we can yes. do it creatively as you know it's cheaper than a psychologist so. yeah exactly and you know sometimes healing is part of healing is just saying i recognize that this thing isn't going to heal any anytime so, you know recognizing the uh yeah that's that's the thing that's bothering me okay i'm at least i know its name now like Darn you anti-social bastard. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dan, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you once more for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Kurt. I, again, I really appreciate you making the, you know, having the show, making the show, making space for, for indie comics uh, community. And then on top of that, letting a schlub like me come on and, and be a part of the show. So I really, really appreciate it. I, look, I don't think you're a slob. I think you're a very talented and creative person. Don't start putting yourself down here now. Come on. I didn't even ask any introspective questions. You're already putting yourself down. What the hell? It's, that was a freebie in introspective. Before I let you go, where can we find you? I just want to say the elevator pitch for Under God is a young woman's mission of mercy turns deadly as she learns her role in the oppression of those she meant to aid. It is a Band of Bards book in previews right now. You can ask your comic shop to order it for you. Right now, I think the final order cutoff, I think the April orders have to be in by the 27th. So please do it sooner than later this month. It'll be out in June, but only if you ask for it this month. You can also order it from... 
bandofbards.com slash bard hyphen shop, but get it for your shop. You want to, you want your shop. You want to get it on new comic book day. Go ahead and order it at your shop. So I, it's a social science fiction one shot. Everything you need to know is right in there. My Twitter account is at Dan Mambiella. You can see little bits of the art. And it's a story that's very me. It's a story that means a lot to me. It's a story that deals with a lot of things that I think about. So I really would love people to see it. It's, it's a story I want, really want uh, to share with people. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. Website's going through a revamp, so you can find it all on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash c forward slash TGT Media. The podcast is actually back now on twogeekstalking.podbean.com or search for Two Geeks Talking on any of your audio streaming services that you happen to enjoy. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.